This is a Turkish commercial 24 hour ration produced by a company called Tada Outdoor. It weighs 1300 grams or exactly three pounds and it contains 2,460 calories. This one's got beef and chicken, menu number two. It comes in five separate menus. It says meal ready to eat ration pack. So you have English translation. There's a full menu list on the back. Instructions for heating and looks pretty straightforward. Oh yeah. It has this hole up here. You could hang this up, my guess. It keeps your food safe. Hang your food up. It's not gonna get pilfered by some raccoon or a bear or something. Let's give it a look. Just a simple tear notch on the top. Let's try that again. There we go. Looks like you gotta be extra careful opening this thing. I mean, look what happened. Let's see if I'll be able to close this afterwards. I hope so. Kinda doubt it now. Okay, so right off the bat, this is an accessory packet with spoon, condiments, and drinks. Here are some water purification tablets. Tomato soup. Yogurt soup. That's 366 calories right there. This one's 100 for the tomato soup. Dried string cheese, that's unusual. I like these packages. They all have a built-in gusset. Oh wow, look at that. A tube of natural pure honey. I can tell you right now, all the different pats of honey I've seen over the years in rations and they bust and they make a mess of everything. This is great, well thought out. Whoa, nice. Black olives. Dried fruit mix, 25 grams. The honey and the olives are 40 grams. These packets over here are between 22 and 25 grams. This looks like a main. Farik rice with chicken and chickpea. And that is a 300 gram main. Excellent built-in gusset. It's probably the best one I've seen yet. You don't even have to fold it out. That's awesome. Wow. That is just a huge pack of tortillas. When I say huge, it only weighs 75 grams, but I mean, look at it. Buckwheat rice with roasted beef. And this looks like some kind of sauce. I think it's a Zika sauce. And this is a heating bag, Unifood. So I'm guessing this is Unifo. And they produce rations for the Turkish military. Very hard to get. And this is a hot beverage pouch. Also, for heating up drinks, you put that in your flameless ration heater. That's filtered coffee. Wow. Columbia. A protein bar, 15 grams of protein. Another hot beverage bag, you get two of them. So three total. They got built-in gussets. Looks like they've borrowed that idea from the Canadian IMP. MRE heater, there's two of those. And there's a third one. These are very hefty heating elements. Enough for this accessory packet. You get two spoons, three unlabeled moist towelettes, two packets of sugar, Lipton yellow label. Not too special. That looks like some kind of chili powder. Get two packs of that. Two packs of salt and pepper. Three little wooden sticks, probably for stirring drinks. Two toothpicks. And then two packs of chewing gum. So there's everything laid out. Let's first start off with breakfast. Okay, and for breakfast, they're starting the day off light. The menu that they recommend features dried string cheese, black olives, that ajika sauce on the tortillas, and then some honey and tea. All right, let's get this out on your tray. Nice, okay, let's first start off with checking out these tortillas. Oh, 
I'll say this. These are the nicest shelf-stable tortillas I've ever seen. You get four of them. They smell like some kind of indistinguishable chemical. They don't smell very good. Actually, before I go any further, might want to heat up some water for the Lipton. Let's test out this hot beverage bag, see how efficient this is. See how well this heats up in that FRH. Look at that heating element. You know that thing is going to be a steamer once it goes off. And since you only get one of these, you got to be careful when you open it. Set this on the bottom. Set the water in. Add 100 milliliters. And while that's heating up, let's check out the dried string cheese. Look at that. Whoa. And then the string cheese. Hmm. It has like a mild white cheddar smell to it. Just a little bit sharp. The black olives. This looks like it's resealable, maybe. No, it's not. Hmm. I love black olives, and these smell of utmost quality. They're really nice. No unusual or off smell. They smell like fresh black olives. So I'm just going to get a couple on here. Seems like a good surface to start. I got to skewer that with this little stirring stick and try one out. Hmm. Okay. They are not going on the tortilla. At least not as is. They're not pitted. And points off for that. I'm sorry, but get the pits out of there, you know? Somebody's just going to crack a tooth on it. These erroneous tortillas and cheese balls. But the olives, they're delicious. Salty. You know, a nice savory flavor. Take a bite, squeeze out the pit, save half of the tortilla. These seem very ripe. And I love the texture. A very high oil content to them. I mean, more so than any other black olive I've ever had. They're top notch. We'll do four olives, some string cheese, dried string cheese in the shape of little balls. And those are virtually flavorless. And it's just texture with a very subtle follow up of a white cheddar undertone. It's just very subtle. Put a a little bit of sajika sauce on there. So that's nice. Look at that. Mmm. That is delicious. It's very nice and mild chili sauce with garlic. Mmm. A range of herbs and spices. It almost tastes like a tomato sauce, but not overpowering in any way. It's like very savory with a light spiciness, light amount of sodium. You know, it's not very salty, but it is bursting with this flavor. It tastes like a little bit of coriander in there. Mmm, wow. That is the star of breakfast right there. I mean, this is a very strange little tortilla we're going to be rolling up here, but, and I can never really roll a tortilla. Watch what I do, it's going to be laughable. All right, look at that. Let's do another one of those. This is probably an abomination and I'm doing it wrong, but that's the beauty of rations and trying out international foods. You're like a kid all over again. And a lot of times that is the allure, you know? Yeah, you see how I fold these up? It's pretty bad. All right, let's try this out. Hmm. 
it works. In the forefront, I'm picking up that ajika sauce. It's the ajika sauce and olives. And I mean, I, I expected that. The cheese, you can't taste it at all now. You could barely taste it before. I figured the rest of it would maybe bring the flavor out. It doesn't really, it just adds crunch and calories. Yeah, I feel like this is the way to go. I mean, if you didn't want to just eat these components one by one and kind of pace it, if you had enough time to just sit down and have a nice breakfast, this is, this is where it's at. The tortilla is the best I've ever had in a ration. I mean, it doesn't have as long a shelf life as, say, the USMRE tortilla, and it's not folded in half, so it takes up a ton of space. The pros outweigh the cons. I mean, the flavor is excellent. The texture, everything is very natural, but the smell, the smell is not natural. At least it tastes normal, and the texture, again, very soft. It doesn't, you know, break up or, you know, anything like that. The folded tortilla in the USMRE and how it's folded, a lot of times they tear at the center. Actually, I think this is exactly how you're supposed to do it. The cheese adds the perfect crunch. The black olive, that adds a little bit of extra sodium and another range of flavors that makes it more complex and enjoyable. And everything works very well together. This is a really nice breakfast. That really grows on me. By the second one, listen to that FRH. It's been going this whole time. I can only guess that that's probably heating up that water quite nicely. I think they should pit the olives so you can get more of them. But then again, they probably maintain their shape. They're absolutely better tasting, you know, when they're minimally processed. That's piping hot. I mean, it is legitimately hot. That's awesome. Lipton tea. Okay, I let that steep for about five minutes. A little bit of that honey on its own. Oh wow, that's somewhat floral, like a garden honey. It's not super high quality, but I do like the tube it's in. That's just some standard Lipton lemon. The honey goes well with it. That is some of the most basic black tea that you can get. It's smooth, not very flavorful, just a light caramel flavor. It's just very, very subtle. A lemon oil essence that really takes down the bitterness of what is a fairly good quality tea. I gotta say, that was the perfect breakfast. It's more like an appetizer for me, so in about three or four minutes, I'm gonna take it over to lunch. Okay, and we're back with lunch. Our main course is gonna be that Frika rice with chicken and chickpea, a protein bar, filtered Colombian coffee, tomato soup, then we'll be cleaning the old palate with some first brand chewing gum. All right, let's get this out on your tray. Nice, okay, let's first start off with getting this main course heated up. I'm just gonna use regular hot water that I boil for the coffee in case that this heating element's unable to, you know, equally heat up both the water and the main. It should, but I'm not gonna take the chance. And while that's heating up, let's check out the tomato soup. That has a very strong and tart, sweet tomato smell. Oh wow, that's just making my mouth water.
soup. That is a terrific tomato basil soup. The only thing that's missing are some croutons. You don't see some actual filter coffee like this in rations very often. Look at that. That's a fascinating design. So while you're waiting for your coffee to steep, this protein bar, coconut, and cacao. Milk protein concentrate and whey concentrate. That's great. And then date syrup is the sugar. That smells rich, very rich of cocoa and coconut. While I'm waiting for the main course to heat up, I think it's a good time to go ahead and enjoy some of the soup. I mean, look at the consistency, it's very thick. Hmm. The only thing it's missing is something with a little crunch, and I think if I saved some of that cheese from breakfast, that would have added the perfect crunch to this. And I really wish I'd saved a couple of those. Hmm. This is just a very pleasant, not overpowering tomato soup. If the packet that it came in was a little bit larger, I would add 125 milliliters of water instead of the 100 that it calls for. That's excellent. It's very simple. Just basil and a little bit of onion and salt and tomato. Then for this protein bar. It's pretty dense and dry. Oh wow. That is odd. The texture resembles food, but if it weren't for that pleasant cocoa and coconut flavor, I wouldn't have even thought that was anything that you could actually eat. It just seems like something that, it's like biting into an eraser. It's very thirst provoking. It's okay, but gotta chase it with water. Okay, this is ready. I'm also gonna take this out. That heated this up quite nicely. Free car rice with chicken and chickpeas. Looking a little bit more substantial than that breakfast, I'll say that. The chicken and chickpeas were on the bottom. The rice was on the top in that pouch. Let's get a little everything. Wow, look at that chicken. Nice whole pieces. It doesn't look overly processed. Hmm. The flavor, it's a little bit bland, actually. I'm surprised by that. Whoops. There we go. That glob of salt, let's mix that in. Yeah, this is going to need everything, because on its own, it's just bland. Nice, they give you chili powder. That's, we use all that. Going to need it. Hmm. The salt, the pepper, and the chili powder barely even flavor this thing. It has a strange flavor that's just off-putting, like a chemical. Hmm. I just hit some crunchy. I think it was like chicken bone or something. Okay. You cannot cover up that pukey zest flavor with the salt and black pepper and red pepper. The chicken has great texture. It doesn't taste overly processed, like when you bite into it and there those little, like, holes in throughout it where it's like the process it's not like processed and reformed chicken that's nice but the chicken has like a terrible flavor to it okay for the coffee hmm. now that's exceptional and it's the closest you're gonna get you know to actual drip you know percolator drip coffee it's a bit weak you know even though it was steeped for a long time and 
with really hot water, it's still not very strong, even with it being Colombian. I think that's why they pick Colombian, because it's the only way it's going to actually taste like coffee. I've had it in Estonian rations in the past, and theirs isn't Colombian, and it just tastes like nothing with a little bit of coffee. Then this. Very surprised by this lunch. I mean, the chicken, the chickpeas, the rice, all have this excellent natural texture, but then the flavor itself, it's bland, yet with this overpowering, mysterious, putrid flavor or seasoning. I don't know what that is. The first brand, chewing gum. It's just like a tiny stick, like a half stick. Hmm. It tastes like I'm biting into a rubber glove with an extremely light, almost non-existent flavor of mint. Really don't know what to think of lunch at all here. I guess it just wasn't all that great. Probably in about two or three hours, I'm gonna take it over to dinner. Okay, it's been a few hours and now we're back with dinner. They shorted the hot chocolate. You can see on the menu list for dinner. It wasn't in the pack. But we do have our buckwheat rice with roasted beef, dried fruit mix, and some yogurt soup. All right, let's get sat on your tray. Nice, okay, let's first start off with heating up this main. And while that's heating up, let's check out this yogurt soup. Kind of smells like sour cream or something. Yeah, that's, let's go back to the spoon. The swizzle sticks are useless. This is some kind of herbal yogurt. I've never had anything like this before. The dried fruit mix. Whoa, what is that? It looks like that has incredible dried fruit. I mean, usually it doesn't smell like this. They use some really ripe. Look at that. This might be one of the more exciting items in this. It really is some of the best smelling dried fruit. And they don't give you enough of that. Let's check this out. Hmm. These odd little gelatinous bits in there. These weird little, I mean, there are tons of them. Not really providing any sort of satisfying texture per se. They're like little curds. And this isn't like any yogurt I've had before. It's very runny and salty. Hmm. And mint, like a light mint. Very unusual to my palate. Yeah, it's just mint in like this potato starch milk culture. The dried fruit, look at that. That looks like peach. A bit too crunchy. A little bit hard on your teeth if you're not ready for it. And this looks like mandarin orange. Yeah, this is delectable. Ripe, freeze-dried fruit. So I believe it's peaches, strawberries, and mandarin oranges. A lot of it's really just broken down into a bunch of little flakes there. Mmm, not bad. The mandarin orange has a slight tartness. If it's mandarin, it could be just standard oranges or maybe even tangerine or something. But the wedges are small. Then the strawberries are very ripe, perfect for being freeze-dried. The Peaches are a bit crunchy. Pulls together is a tart, sweet, and very crunchy freeze-dried fruit mix that's different from your average blend of fruit.
Nice. Wow. Look at those pieces of beef. Just get a little bit of everything there. Peas, buckwheat, and beef. And looks like little chunks of carrot too. Hmm. Wow. Dry and bland. This thing needs to get saved. Doesn't smell or taste off like that last one. Weird. This is like the driest beef I've ever had in a ration. It's like very low moisture content. It's like it's overcooked or something. The salt and pepper helps the flavor. And the buckwheat, thankfully, isn't also very dry, so if you mix the beef with the buckwheat, it's alright. I mean, the flavor is good. You're, you're tasting primarily salt and pepper and, you know, chili powder that is binding with the little bit of what you have here. Buckwheat has a pretty wholesome whole grain flavor. I'm tempted to drop the yogurt on this just to give it... I'm not even joking, I'm gonna do that. Just I'm desperate. This is so dry. It's like here. I know this is nuts. But I just don't care because like it needs moisture content. It just looks kind of vile, but I mean what can you do? Yep. That's what you're supposed to do. Oh my gosh. Wow. I should have saved more of it. Just getting all the beef mixed into that yogurt so you can actually eat the stuff it's like a gravy that yogurt on its own is weird you know it's not like regular yogurt that the western palate will be adjusted to it's not like yogurt i've had in indian food restaurants where you know it's like on the side and it's that little palate cleanser deal nothing really like that either and it's closer to that than you know like yo play you'd get you know in the dairy section but yeah that worked wonders that hot chocolate curious as to what that would have been like I mean, they just completely left it out that I mean that's not even that common you never really see that I mean, just completely missing the component not even like replaced by an extra coffee or anything like that they're just not including that hot chocolate Hmm. What a pleasant change up from your average fruit mix. Oranges, they don't freeze dry very well. They break up easily, you get these little bits at the bottom, and a large portion of the orange is moisture, so you're not really left with much, but it really does remind me of an insect exoskeleton, you know, biting into it, but instead of whatever that would be like, which I don't know, it tastes like orange. You know, this is the first Turkish ration I've tried out. It's a cool experience regardless. Now here's the wet nap. You can get three of these. While you're in your tent at the end of the evening, you could actually clean up with the two, if you save two of them and then just wiped your hands down with one or saved it for if you made a mess. Or if you need to clean out your canteen cup. No napkins provided, that's points off. I would have liked a small packet of tissues or something. The chewing gum was just not that great, but at least it wasn't overpowering and minty. This was a Tada outdoor brand, you know, Turkish civilian or commercial 24 hour ration. I'd have to say the flameless ration heater technology from Unifo is on point. I mean, exceptionally efficient. I, I would have to say it's some of the best in the world. The main courses leaving a lot to be desired. Well, anyway. This is Steve1989. I hope you liked the video. And I'll be coming back at you with something new. Or old. Alright, cool. See ya.